Morning Pack, this is gonna be the most real and raw tour you ever did see. I always see so many put together tours and I wonder, why doesn't my place look like that? Not gonna lie, I've cleaned my van's drawers for a tour before, but not today. We're gonna show you as it is. I've been asking Crystal to do this video idea for quite some time now. I can't believe you're letting me do it. Every morning I open my eyes and see my unfinished ceiling. Well, I'm still in my PJs. Let's get this tour started. Welcome to our halfway cabin tour. What do I mean by halfway cabin tour? Two years ago, we purchased this off-grid land. When we pulled up, it was unloved, overgrown, and in desperate need of work. Like, a lot of work. We started with clearing the land, building a driveway, and installing a brand new roof. All doing so without any source of water or electricity. The last year, we made massive strides with our cabin transformation, including trenching all around the land. We turned on our off-grid power system for the first time. Everything changed when we got new windows and running water in our kitchen at the cabin. It's amazing to think how much has changed since, and yet how far we still have to go. This is our bedroom, one of two in the cabin. We chose this side because we built a deck right off of our bedroom and recently installed an eight foot patio door that gives us walk out access to the beautiful woods as we are nestled in the remote Canadian wilderness. Our cabin is a little bit more than 600 square feet, meaning it is a tiny cabin, which is why we have our washer and dryer in our self-built closet. It still needs some work, so I understand all the woodworkers out there, we will do the finishing touches soon. But more on the washer and dryer. We went with the Bosch Series 500. It is a compact washer and dryer that you will find in people's kitchens, in their closets, as they're only 27 inches wide. Nice and little. The heat pump dryer means it uses 1,200 watts instead of your 5,000 to 7,000 watts an average dryer uses. So we live off grid and our system can handle that no problem. I think it's not hooked up yet, but it will be. Kidding, we did the calculations, it'll be great. We built shelves for all of our clothes. You'd think we would be a little bit motivated to put our clothes away since building that, but as you can see, we still got a bag of laundry here, and who doesn't have a pile of clothes on their dresser? Guilty. Anyone else? Today, the drawers aren't much better than what's on top of the dresser. Yikes. This is awkward. Actually, this whole video is awkward. <laughs> but we're done hiding it. What yeah. is that? <laughs> it drives me crazy. Oh Thank my you. goodness, look at this. <laughs> I literally just don't even know. That's my cue to head to the takeout window. Another beautiful day in the woods. When's my order ready? Two minutes! Thank you. Nothing says good morning like coffee. Good morning. While everything's under construction, the coffee machine is always delicious and consistent. To be honest, I'm super happy we're doing this tour because it's really important to reflect and celebrate where we are today. We still have so far to go and for a long time we thought we had to be completely done before we do a tour. But to be honest, I was inspired by Max Bid's tour. It was beautiful and I like to see places at their current state and see how they evolve. We've done this all together, Pac, so I hope you enjoy this tour. Welcome to my favorite space. This is the cabin kitchen. When we arrived to the abandoned cabin, it did not have a kitchen. It was very run down. We needed to rip it apart, take back the walls, the ceiling, and get everything out of here to start from scratch. Today, we have a bright, beautiful kitchen that we customize with Baltic birch, cedar walls, large windows, and an island. And in the island, we have a sink, The sink holds our dishes until we're ready to clean them. <laughs> Speaking about the island, it has 360 storage. Are you ready for this? Even doggy dishes, because we have two dogs on each side, or else our dominant dog, Bella Bear, would eat Izzy's food. Love, garlic and onion. 
Love the skins too. I don't even know what this drawer is. Do you know what this drawer is? Towels. I call that junk drawer number one. This drawer, pretty good organization. Garbage cleaning supplies and our beautiful plumbing job. It was the first time we ever did a plumbing job and we didn't have to go to the hardware store for an extra part, so pat on the back, super proud. Junk drawer number two. And everyone's snack cupboard. Come on. And to be honest, for a long time living here, we lived without a kitchen, without running water and electricity, and it made life very challenging. It definitely made us stronger, but I have to say, having the ability to cook and clean and prep food has been such a game changer. Although there are still quite a few things to do in here, like, you know, switch out our plywood counters for a real counter, finish off the windows and our bar area. We are so pleased with how it's turned out. I love it fry anyone? She literally can't do the stew right now. She's freaking out that I just showed the fry in the stove. That's gross. Come on, everyone has it. Like, it's relatable. Sure people have fries in their door, but this is our gas range stove, five Hang on. where you can find old fries. <laughs> if you have a fry or something in your stove, please write it in the comments. Like, we're all not perfect. We cook, we drop things, it happens and I clean it later. I made fries last night. Give me a break, lady. This is a full-size fridge, which you'll figure out how we run later on in the video. Hint, hint. And freezer. Snack break. Please. What was that throw? Oh my God, I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's a good There's one. There's two ways to get to our drawers currently. <laughs> Take a look. Oh, where are you going here? Whose spice cupboard is clean? They all need vacuums. <laughs> well, this has surely come a long way. Goodbye, dusty old makeshift kitchen, and hello sink with running water. Room number two. A quick thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this week's video. When I wear this hat in public, it almost always gets recognized by fellow AG1 drinkers. That's because good things spread far, and we can always agree that it's changed our lives. AG1 is the healthiest habit we have. It's one easy scoop of powder and I get 75 vitamins and minerals. We feel incredible when we drink AG1 and you can expect to also feel more productive, more energized, your immune system and your digestive system will thank you. Most of us aren't getting the nutrients our bodies need each day from food. We aren't and that's even when we try and our bodies can suffer. This will change that for you. I'm so sure that if you were to try AG1, you would feel the benefits immediately. It is so worth it to switch up your routine, skip that energy drink or the latte, and invest in your health. Try it out and see how it makes you feel. We're excited to hear from y'all, and when you click on the link in the description with your first purchase, you will receive a one-year supply of vitamin D dropper and five free travel packs for while you're on the move. It's not easy. This is currently our guest room, our office, our storage room, and our water room. We have to make use of every space living in a tiny cabin. This closet is our utility room. In here, we have our drilled well water pump. What's it called? Is it a water pump? No. What the Wait, f thing Pressurized pump. Pressurized pump. Yeah, it's a pump. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. It has our drilled well pressurized pump, our water heater, and our two filters that filter out the iron and the arsenic found in our drilled well that we had drilled here. Not only is it unfinished, we actually have quite a few things to work on in here. We are first time homeowners, cabin owners, and there's a lot that we didn't know when we started putting all of these things in this closet. We need to get a humidifier in here, we need to get the AC up and running, and we need to get some proper trays to waterproof this room as well because there is tons of condensation and water coming off of all of these things. So that is a lot of work upcoming soon. And if you have any tips, we would greatly appreciate it because currently these towels are not doing much. Pull it up. <laughs> They're soaked. Yeah, not a good look and needs to be dealt with immediately. Yes. Hey, can you, uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna have some soup. Can you pass me it? How did that get in there? Who knows, storage room. <laughs> Putting it back. We plan on doing something really cool on this wall and even something really cool on this wall. Toilet paper on toilet paper. As you can see, this room is currently unfinished. We plan on doing that this winter along with our attic, which will be our third room. 
Whoa! Yay for winter projects. I always forget how big it is up there until I look and it makes me so excited for indoor projects. This is the smallest room in the house. It's the bathroom and I want to say it's the most done. However, we're not quite there yet. Got some lights hanging from the ceiling, a half finished roof up there. Ceiling. And no handles yet here, but almost there, almost there. It looks I love pretty. this space. It's like a little spa. I love it. The way that, you know, everything turned out is just so neutral, muted and spacious. We did have to go with a fairly small shower in here because it is quite small, but it's so much better than showering outside, using a hose, showering in the greenhouse. And winter was a lot better after we had a hot shower inside. Also, you were just a lot better. Yeah, no, like, we not both were. To go to the outhouse. We both were. We smelled better, you get it? We smelled a lot better. <laughs> everything was, everything was better. Bathroom is a game changer. Let's break down the vibe. We have a maple plywood vanity with a concrete looking quartz counter concrete sink with a vessel tap. Did I get it? I think so. <laughs> We're learning. We have a massive mirror that has storage in it. This is huge because like I said, it's small in here and we don't have a ton of storage. And last but not least everyone, yes, our drawers probably look like all of yours. This little cubicle is way too small. Has a rain ball shower head. It's glass. And you look like you're in a museum. Yeah, you look like you're a little in a museum here, but um, it's amazing. We fully installed the shower ourselves, top to bottom, waterproofing this entire room, putting tile down, real tile. Oh, well everyone, let's talk about how we, uh, in this household. In this household, we burn our poop. <laughs> Insert short here. In this household, we burn our poop. Yep, you heard me right, from solid to ash. How? I became toilet girl, that video went viral, but this is our incinerating toilet. We love it, it is so sick. It takes your waste and it burns it. And then you have a little bit of ash that you can then put in your flower gardens or your flower beds or you can dispose of. It's an off-grid toilet. We are off-grid, we do not have septic yet. So this is... Yet? Are we getting it? This is the real deal. Are we getting it? Maybe. <laughs> it's wild to think how far we have come. When we arrived, this room was nothing more than a storage room with a poop bucket. And now to see it transformed into an almost completed space is really one of our biggest milestones yet. Caught, 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 trying to sweep, okay. trying to sweep. I don't think like, I think it's cool to like show it in its rawness, but like, it's not like we, like I didn't sleep this morning because I was busy, but. Like, it's not Caught. like we live like this, so. Yeah, you it's do. You sweep 20 times a day, everyone knows. You can often find tools when you sit down. Ow! Kidding, y'all. I knew it was there. Perfect doggy number one. Perfect doggy number two. This room is easily the biggest transformation at the cabin yet, because... This is so surreal. Hey. <laughs> transformed with this one window. But we gotta start from the bottom. When we got here, we took back the walls and the ceiling in this entire room. And then we redid the floors, we insulated, ran our electrical, and ran our plumbing. This took a long time. What did we find in our walls? Poop. There was poop everywhere. When we say abandoned cabin, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Our goal in this room was to make the inside feel like the outside. We really wanted our tiny home to open up to the outdoors and to feel like you're in nature at all times. This is especially important living in Canada, having all four seasons, whether it's winter or it's pouring rain or a beautiful summer, autumn day, you have the view of the outside world. You can see nature passing by you and you just can't beat it. It is the focal point when you walk in here and that was the goal. That is why this room is also muted, very Scandinavian-like and beautiful. It really just draws you to the outside. The living area does not have a TV. It has a wood stove. 
in the winter months. This is our main source of heat. We also have a backup source of heat in here, which is the propane heater in the guest room office or storage room, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Second room. <laughs> and we will also have a heat pump that will help heat and cool our cabin. Coming soon. Coming soon. To YouTube near you. This is unfinished. The trusses are unfinished. The trim is unfinished. But let's not forget how much work went into the ceiling. We raised the roof and put drywall in between the trusses. We are gonna be doing some faux beams. And to top it all off, Jasmine recently just finished doing the micro cement texturized cement style ceiling. It turned out really, really well. I love it. That's all I have to tell you, I love it. This door completely eliminates the south facing wall lets a ton of light in and opens up the space entirely to the outdoors. Welcome to our deck, everyone. My favorite space ever. <laughs> and my favorite build we've ever done together. It was super fun. We enjoyed the research process and learning how to build a deck and the build itself was a blast. I would build decks for a living for sure. Yeah, I can't wait till we have to redo the decking boards because it's just so fun. I'm gonna invite friends over and we're gonna have a nice decking board party. In all realness, this deck is our outdoor living room. We have our barbecue and our wood-fired pizza oven here with our dining table. This is a great place to host our friends and family and we love it so much. We have the little seating area with the fireplace, which is a gorgeous place to snuggle up at night and watch the fire. What about the fun thing? Oh yeah, we do have a trampoline off our deck because fun. <laughs> and right now, there's a canopy sitting right there because we're trying to figure out if that'd be a good spot for the outdoor kitchen. So let us know where you think our outdoor kitchen could go after you watch the full tour and figure out where everything is. One of the best things about this seat in the house is I get to stare at my roof. And it's not just any roof. Crystal and I laid a metal roof, just the two of us, all by ourselves, and it took us around two weeks. When we moved to the cabin, the shingles were falling off the roof. It was so important that we laid the metal roof before winter came, and to be honest, we kept pushing it because it is a very intimidating project and we had zero experience laying a roof. Not only to mention laying a roof in the cold, but just laying a roof in general is very challenging, and we did it just the two of us my most proud project we've ever done. And that's why I love this seat, because I can just sit back and look at our work. And it's watertight after three years, so roofer. <laughs> Welcome to the woods. Our cabin sits on a 15 acre wooded lot. It is fairly natural and unkept. The further you get away from the cabin, the trails grow up with grass and ferns and moss, and there's a beautiful stream running through it that leads to the lake. We spend a lot of time here, the four of us. No matter what the weather, you'll catch us in the lake, even in the middle of winter. It's a great place to refresh, clear your mind, and just sit completely nestled in nature. And honestly, for a long time, the river was a little bit of a lifeline for us as we needed to clean ourselves. So we would jump in there and get refreshed after a long work day. And that was huge before we had a shower. It's easy now to see what drew us here. It's the feeling we have when we are close to nature. To wake up every day and to marvel at its beauty. It's the space to explore and the quiet to reflect and the chance to build something that is uniquely ours. Welcome to the porch. We lived off a generator all winter long for the last three years here at the cabin. So let's just say, did a couple oil changes on the deck, porch, this thing. Take a look. Oil, 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 oil. Anywho, we're gonna fix that. Yes, that's recycling, sitting in a bag on my beautiful storm door. Your socks are a very big representation of this video. What can I say? My love's a mess. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, girls. We gotta do that soon. And that. This is our driveway. It's always filled with upcoming projects. Here's one, and here's another. Lovely. 
just lovely. The first thing you see when you come to the cabin is the gorgeous front yard. <laughs> we did a really good job putting this together the first time. We had beautiful green grass. However, we've done lots of work since, trenching, and so we now have piles of sand, overgrown grass, and huge divots and puddles. <laughs> Lawn makeover is clearly an upcoming project. I am the most excited for this because every day when I look out, it's just been months of looking at this. Be honest, how, how does it make you feel? It drives me crazy. Yeah. I love this area and I just can't wait to get it back to a flat, beautiful, even surface without big giant puddles. This area is extremely low. It's been wet all spring. Puddles, puddles galore. So what's an upcoming project that's gonna go along here? Yeah, we are doing a tractor path. Love it. Tadpoles are actually living in here. And our goal is to take care of the drainage because this spring, after all the trenching we did last year to get electrical and plumbing, we created a lot of holes in a the mess. yard. A big mess. This is a big mess. <laughs> and although it just looks very magical sometimes, it's just simply not right now. <laughs> What is magical is our berry trellis. Our dream when we got to this property was to have a self-sustaining homestead and grow all of our own fruit and vegetables. And this is a little bit of the fruit of our labor. The berry trellises. The berry trellises. Then they're doing good. This is the solar field. Behind me, we have 10.8 kilowatts of solar on two pole mounts. We installed these the end of last summer. Fall. Fall. There was a lot of steps to get power out here, like trenching, building a battery bank, all of the foundation and the installation of the panels, running wires in the house, clearing. However, now we are living with power and that is an incredible feeling that you just cannot replace. We spent the majority of our time living at the cabin without electricity or power. We were using generators and battery banks and it was shifty. <laughs> and it was slow battery a lot of the time. That is no longer a problem. And we are forever grateful that we took our time and research what we needed out here. It's been awesome. And it's the system's been working great and we have never run the out. The what? The system. Oh, I think what you did I say? The system. The system. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're keeping it real around here, we'll keep that in. The system is more Oh my god. <laughs> I think I'm the system has been working great. Yeah. We even went 10 days without sun and our batteries were at 50%, which is incredible. We're and doing... then the next day it was sunny, back up to 100%. Yeah. Although this just looks like a pile of wood chips and a pile of rocks. Give them the wide angle here. <laughs> I have big dreams for underneath the solar array. You know, garden, hangout. And when are we doing all this? This summer. Since we're on a real life tour, I taught. <laughs> Since we're on a real life tour, I'd love to show you our siding. This siding- It's not siding. Is 26 years old and it's really not siding. It's actually just plywood. Quarter and inch ply. Crumbling under the sun and the weather and the rain and the long cold Canadian winters. This siding will not make it another winter. And that's why we're gonna do it soon. Just like everything else. <laughs> oh my God. We're just walking around, you know, like doing the tour <laughs> and laughing at, you know, the things that we don't show. You gotta get a real close up on Or that. that I actually don't even look at myself because I want to put blinders, blinders on. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Got her completely broken, fascia completely rotted. Oh my goodness. There's, there's some uh, some major upgrades to be happening around here. You know, although we've been doing a lot, there's still a lot to be done. <laughs> I'm happy though. That, that makes me happy. There's a lot to be done. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> that thing is as tall as me. My broken gutter and my hopefully non-poisonous <laughs> plant here. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you know. <laughs> It was, it was a long work day that day. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I can't explain it. I can't. What's under here? Storage. <laughs> Anyone else store stuff under their house? I don't know. This is actually, this is cool. I'm glad we're doing this because I gotta look at this all day long. You know, I'm walking around. You know, I tell Jazz too every couple weeks. I'm like, we gotta go do a walk around. <laughs> go, go walk around and pick stuff up and keep it clean. Come on, okay. And not only is this showing all of you a, a toad, oh. a real life tour, it's also showing all of you what's to come this summer. It's pretty exciting. Just about time to get my whippersnipper fixed. <laughs> what about your tractor? 
and my tractor. <laughs> Recently, we had one of the hydraulic fluid lines go on the tractor. The hydraulic line has come loose. It's on its way. We live in the woods and we have the hydraulic fluid. So one out of two things. And as soon as we get that working, we are well on our way to many other exciting projects. Poor old Clementine needs a new line. <laughs> <laughs> this is Clementine, our tractor. Clementine is new to the pack, and thank you to all of you for giving it that wonderful happy orange name. But I have to say, if I could go back in time, we would have gotten one a lot earlier because for the last few years, we've done a lot of hauling, a lot of lifting, a lot of digging by hand, and it's a game changer. And you broke your back, basically. <laughs> yeah, it kind of, kind of did. Not okay? No. I do have an injury, however, Tractor life is the life for us, especially out here with this much acreage. It really helps to have a machine like this for all of the different projects we're working on, like the one behind the tractor. <laughs> Just a tub in the middle of the woods, you know? <laughs> it's gonna be a lot more magical one day. <laughs> Swamp water. <laughs> You're all gonna love this one day. Just not yet. Oh, you need a hand. Oh, oh, oh. Have you all seen that new gadget? It's a retractable hose. Motorized. Just retractable. But it's motorized. No, man. You know how a vacuum cord works? You pull it, it goes in? That's oh. all it is. Motorized? No, believe. it's not. Have you all seen that new gadget where you just give your hose a little pull and then it retracts in so perfectly? I think we need it. But how can you be mad when we... Oh. Oh. How can you be mad? You don't ever clean up the hose. No just, wonder Crystal's not mad. Just she some, just waters. Just some ankle breaking rocks down there, if y'all remember. I rolled one. You look, you look, you look oh, you okay? How can you be mad when finally we have electricity and water and shelter and all of these necessities to living off grid and life has never been better out here in the woods. It's never been better, right? Never been better. You are right about that. All of this lumber is for the project right over there where we just were. And it's important when you live this far out to accumulate and order everything you need or else you're gonna be making a lot of trips. Majority of the time, you're going to see basically lumber yards everywhere in your yard. No matter where you walk, there is piles of wood everywhere out here. So as you can see, there seems to be a common theme here. You know, upcoming project to the left, upcoming project to the right. It's a thing. Oh, would you look at that? We still have a trench open here. Who did half a job? Clementine! <laughs> I blame Clementine! Something that's magical in the woods that you might not always hear, our outhouse. Super beautiful, we built this last year. The ferns are coming up nicely. Doors a little funk after setting in the winter. We live in Canada. Pretty clean though! I'd say we're doing good. In the outhouse department, <laughs> let me tell you that much. Two for two, magic in the woods, here we go. Welcome back to the spa area. We are so pleased with this area. We've been loving it. It is as good as it looks. It actually doesn't get better than this. What there we is got? still an open trench, but you know, we'll get there. So we've got two cold plunge tubs built up on a deck, as well as a place to hang your towels, your robes, set your water down or your sit beverage. Or your butt. And then, Hot tub and sauna? The words, they come sometimes. <laughs> oh my. Hot tub? No, I wanted to say something great, but it just didn't come. The best parts of the spa area, the sauna and the hot tub, both wood fired and a place to rinse off. This might look a little luxurious for off-grid living, but for us, it is crucial. We are doing tons of work out here, and this is a little piece of paradise to get away to after the day is done. And boy, does it feel good on the muscles. And you know what? Like, it, this is what it's all about. Look up, look around. Like, being out here and being with nature in one of these tubs, no better feeling. Staying in your own backyard. <laughs> We have two apple, two plum, and two pear trees in the fruit orchard. And this is actually their third year here, so they are growing to be quite big. And the goal here is to be able to produce jams. Um, Pie. 
Pie? <laughs> of course pie. That's the, the biggest priority out here. <laughs> Anyways, the fruit trees are happy and they're gonna grow to be quite large and hopefully produce a lot of fruit each year. This is our garden area. We designed it, we planted it, we built it, and we love it. There's two realities here. It is absolutely beautiful. We are working very hard at it. The other reality is we are very new to gardening and it's a lot of work and we're kind of just crossing our fingers and our toes and hoping that everything's gonna turn out. Mother nature. Has over here, the tomato plants look really good. And over there, they're looking a little sad. Is it us? Is it the weather? We've had very inconsistent sunshine and rain. We're learning. We've built seven raised garden beds out of six by six milled lumber. It is heavy duty and it's beautiful because you can sit down and get right in there with the kale, the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the herbs, the peppers, the onion, the garlic. There's all kinds of beautiful vegetables growing here. Beans. And we are super, super proud of how this turned out. This is the dream. We've been dreaming of this for a long time. I have anyways. We have a garden trellis. We have a garden workbench. This has all of our supplies. That way, when you're managing a garden this large, you have everything you need right here and organized. They say an acre takes 11 years off your life. We've had this pro mix for about a month. It needs to go in our in-ground garden right there. Surprised those cucumbers are still alive without the pro mix. <laughs> They're zucchinis. And cucumbers. Oh, what do I know? This is the workshop. When we first moved here, we actually didn't have anywhere to store all of our tools that we were going to be using for the big upcoming projects of renovating the abandoned cabin. We were actually living with them at the time and for a long time. However, that needed to change for a few reasons. We started by learning how to use a chainsaw for the first time and felling the trees in this area. We then excavated it and leveled it. That way, this 12 by 34 auxiliary building could be placed here and we could use it to store all of our tools and it could be the battery house for our off-grid solar electrical system. So really this is so much more than just a building because getting to this point meant that we could frame out the battery house, we could then start building the off-grid electrical system inside, trenching around the property to run the electrical lines and connect it all to the house giving power across the land. Before we move on, I need to draw attention to the fact that the building did not always look like this. In fact, it's rather embarrassing how it was looking a few weeks ago. It had accumulated everything and none of it was organized. We spent 10 days behind the scenes bringing this to life, a full-blown renovation. You can watch that video here. And now it's a beautiful organized workshop. Every Do not be fooled because not everything is looking that organized. This is the tornado of a lumber pile we have going on right now. <laughs> I would love to stop and clean this up right now, but we're just not going to. No. <laughs> Maybe next week. No. In all honesty, we have a great plan for all of our lumber yard. However, hey, lumber. let me just take you to the other side of the workshop because this is what's holding us up 11 cord of wood sitting on the opposite side we do plan to build a lean-to right here to store all of that tornado lumber back there however we need to build a firewood shed and we cannot wait we're super <laughs> excited to build one because this will be the first winter that we have properly dry wood Ready to in go. In a proper structure. That a tractor can pick up with forks and bring it right to our porch. It's gonna make this winter so much better and I know that all of you probably have amazing wood storage storage designs. So and you methods do, of bringing your wood to your house. But hook, we didn't. Hook them up in the comments. Remember, we had to be a UTV. <laughs> be a UTV, yeah. That is not the way to do it. This winter, we were literally hauling wood by bags, wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows. and that's not good in the winter. So. Our goal is to get this wood moved with the tractor and build a structure so that way this frees up this entire area. Question for you all. We've said so many projects that we're going to do this year. And I mean this year, like we're going to finish all everything that we've talked about before winter comes. Do you all think we can do it? Because I don't know if we're being a little optimistic, but ambitious. ambitious. We'll see. Oh, gosh. Look at that. Welcome to the garbage. Come see the other side first. 
slash donate pile. Since we moved here, our goal was to get our green thumbs out and we've done that. We have this beautiful garden around our garbage house. However, on the other side, we are still working at keeping it clean and organized and tidy. Things have accumulated once again. And you probably don't see this in the back of the videos because we probably avoid showing it, but for your eyes only. Um, how about we just talk about like the diesel container? In the, in the... In your green thumb garden? <laughs> you might have jumped over that, eh? <laughs> yeah. We keep our diesel cans behind the trash bin. <laughs> this is vulnerability, people. We're letting it all out. Is it gonna be like this forever? No, but is it right now? Yes. And if you're building a house or a cabin or any sort of project, you'll know this is the reality. You just have so much on the go and you can hard to decide of what you need to choose to do each day. Just checked in with myself. Even if you're not building anything, life, man, life. We're all surviving. Everyone can relate. Can all relate. Tractor bucket, trash. Lumber, pavers. I literally just don't even know. Really clean gorilla cart. Generator, generator, wheelbarrow, wood, trellises, scaffolding, big mess. Future project, future project. Pavers everywhere. What the heck's going on? Elephant in the room, Porter. Porter's machine's been here for about five weeks. His truck is currently broken down. He's working on it. He's working hard to get back here. His engine blew up. We're still waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> so we get, we get to look at Kitty Cat, which I'm um, not gonna lie, great view. I would say this is one of our biggest accomplishments when we first got here was making this driveway. It, it's very long and it was a ton of work and we learned it all for the first time. We learned how to run an excavator and we're both so proud of that. It's holding up extremely well with the geotextile we put down. I'm very much very proud of it to this date and it's made it through Jasmine's plowing. However, it's lined with pavers. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> One day. We'll get to that project too. Yeah. <laughs> this is a three to four season growing dome. It extends our growing season. We built it last summer. It took us quite some time, but we are now officially have it growing a lot of maintenance, but we're enjoying it. It is thriving in here. Other than the fact that I just discovered we have some aphids or aphids or whatever the heck they are. I'm gonna go literally get some tape right now and take them off. They bug me, those things. <laughs> Chris is annoying right now. <laughs> I'm annoyed. Yeah. Lots they're, of them. They're very annoying. The sun's energy hits the growing dome and it becomes trapped in here. Because it's geodesic, it follows the sun, and the sun reflects off of here and bounces back into the space. One thing that makes having the greenhouse so incredible out here is that it is an additional room. It really is a place to come and sit down, call a friend, get away, stretch. It's so nice and relaxing and warm in here. There's nothing not to love when you're in here. It is definitely one of my favorite spots. Except those aphids. 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 Or mm -hmm. aphids. And now for the reality. I was wondering where my hat went. Wow, hose. Another hose. Extension cords. There's power and water in here, so sometimes if I need power, I plug it in here. Which is glorious, yeah. but let's be real. We just don't clean up. So this is honestly not bad. It's really not bad. It's, it's fairly organized. Yeah, there's some stuff that has to be put away, but it's all right. The biggest problem right now is those things. Oh, Chris doesn't want to talk about this house anymore. <laughs> it is dumb. The reality behind gardening and being self-sufficient, eh? Yep. All right, time to clean up now. 